Well, Australia's top-ranked golfer Adam Scott had another consistent year in 2012, topped off by his victory at Kingston Heath in the Talisker Masters. The golf show's Annabelle Rowley caught up with the current world number six during the Australian Open at the Lakes. Adam, thank you very much for joining us on the golf show today. You've had a very successful 2012, but surely the highlight was slipping on that prestigious gold jacket. Yeah, that was a great way uh, not to finish up the year, but certainly uh, in the wind up of my year, it was great to get a win. Uh, and also being in Australia feels very good to win on home soil uh, and win the Australian Masters and put the gold jacket on, which I've been dreaming of since I was a kid, really. So. Uh, you know, very satisfying coming off a pretty solid year for me. Adam, what do you regard to be the major components of your game that enable you to score in the category of a world-class golfer? Um, well, at, at some point, all of it's got to be pretty good. There isn't just one thing. Everyone plays so well out there that all areas of your game have to be very sharp. Um, but certainly, you know, I drive the ball um, probably better than average out there. and. Uh, some weeks I can take advantage of that if the rest of my game's on. Um, but I'd say my driving is my strength, uh, but I've worked hard on all other areas, especially my short game over the last couple of years to bring that up to the level that keeps me competing week in, week out. And what mental strategies do you employ when things start to go a little haywire around on the course? Uh, I think I've just taken a much more uh, calm approach to coming out to play uh, over the years and after doing it for a fair while like I have now I've been through all the different emotions you can have on the course and I've had plenty of those days where it all slips away from you and I think in the beginning frustration can easily take over but now you just have to there are just a few little triggers and I guess sure. as you manage a game you figure out ways to eliminate really bad scores and hopefully you can do the best job you can not to blow yourself right out of the tournament. And do you enjoy the travel component of being a tour player or do you view it as simply part of your job? Well, yeah, yeah, it's part of the job, but uh, I've always enjoyed it. You know, I think I look back and think uh, of fond memories traveling through Europe when I was uh, first on tour and how much fun that was and what an experience for a young guy who turned pro and then to play on the European tour and go to a different country every week was Absolutely. great. Uh, and I've traveled a lot less the last couple of years, kind of basing out of the States. But uh, still, it's a great, great job for uh, seeing the world. And we're in Shanghai and Shenzhen and Singapore and everything the last few weeks. Fantastic. So uh, I, it is definitely one element of the job that I love. What do you miss most about our beautiful country, Australia, when you're away? Well, I'm probably my family and friends the most, but uh, you know, it's it's great for me doing all this traveling, but still I then think about how lucky we are down here and what a great country we have. I love coming home at the end of the year, certainly seeing my family and friends, but getting some Aussie things like meat pie and a nice coffee and <laughs> stuff like that, a bit of cricket is always great fun because I yeah. miss all that stuff all year. There's a famous saying, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. When you're playing tournament golf, do you feel that you can relax and enjoy the ambience that a golf course provides or are you too focused to stop and smell the roses? Uh, it's a little different, I guess, when you get into tournament mode that uh, your focus can be fairly intense and, and I'm not looking at the flowers when I'm playing the Masters <laughs> or anything like that. But there are some places you go to like a pebble beach where you just can't help but stand on the top of the hill on the eighth hole and take in some incredible views and uh, think how lucky you are to be playing a US Open or the AT&T at Pebble Beach and what a great venue for golf that is. So. Uh, you know, at times you do, and you just have to be somewhat still grateful. I think it's good to do that. Away from golf, I know you do several things to relax. I've done my research, and I know you have a special affinity with the ocean and you love surfing. I know you're a very good tennis player, but what I'm really interested in asking you about is uh, the guitar and the piano. <laughs> How adept are you at these playing these musical instruments? Yeah, I'm not very good at them at all, and uh, you've good research to find out that I do mess around with that a little bit. I've played the guitar since high school, but I pick it up every now and again and I think this would be fun to play a lot and then it lasts for about a month and then, I, then it doesn't come back out for another 12 months. And similar with the piano, the piano <laughs> sits in the living room at home and I'm only here for, for a few weeks, so uh, I don't get to play that much. But, uh, 
and it becomes more frustrating the more I play because I'm not very good. Sure, sure. <laughs> On to a more serious question. The Adam Scott Foundation has been raising funds for charities for the past six years. Was there a catalyst that prompted you to select these particular charities? Um, it's been an interesting journey for the foundation. Uh, it was all, all set up by the work I saw the PGA Tour doing for charities in the States and I felt there was an opportunity for me to do something down here and we really covered a very broad range of charities over the years and helped raise a lot of money and hopefully make a difference to these charities but uh, as we move forward I've really turned the focus of the foundation toward education as the platform moving forward I just have really developed a strong belief that you know we need to educate uh, Australia as best we can and uh, you know there are a lot of people who are going to miss out because they're uh, you know disadvantaged or underprivileged in some way yeah. and uh, so if I can get a fair few kids through school over my time of playing on the golf course then uh, you know I'll feel certainly a sense of accomplishment with that. My final question is uh, regarding 2013 what are your goals the next year? Well uh, yeah you've caught me off guard a bit there I haven't really laid them all out I mean the obvious one is to win golf tournaments and that's just the same every year I guess going into 2013 is kind of somewhat carry off where I left off in 2012 with my performances in the majors and sure. obviously really close at the British Open but I was very very close at the US Open and, yeah. and the US PGA too and it's just a couple little breaks here and there over a few days and I felt I would have had a chance to win those so if I can get myself in a similar kind of position maybe use some of my uh, learning experiences this year and get over the line in a major next year. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time home in Australia. Yeah, thanks a lot, Annabelle.